First Chronicles. First Chronicles, chapter 1. Adam was the father of Seth, and his descendants were Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, who had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth was the father of Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus, and they were the ancestors of the kingdoms named after them. Gomer was the ancestor of Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togarma. Javan was the ancestor of Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. Ham was the father of Ethiopia, Egypt, Put, and Canaan, and they were the ancestors of the kingdoms named after them. Ethiopia was the ancestor of Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rayama, and Sabtica. Rayama was the ancestor of Sheba and Dedan. Ethiopia was also the father of Nimrod, the world's first mighty warrior. Egypt was the ancestor of Ludim, Anamim, Lehabim, Naphtuhim, Pethrusim, Kesluhim, and Kaphtarim, the ancestor of the Philistines. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon. His other son was Heth. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Girgashites, the Hivites and Archites, the Sinites, the Arvidites, the Zemorites, and the Hamathites. Shem was the ancestor of Elam, Asher, Arpachshad, Lud, Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether, and Meshech. They were the ancestors of the kingdoms named after them. Arpachshad was Shelah's father and Eber's grandfather. Eber named his first son Pelech, because in his time the earth was divided into tribal regions. Eber's second son was Joktan, the ancestor of Almodad, Shelah, Hazermaveth, Jira, Hadoram, Uzzel, Dikla, Ebel, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab. Shem's descendants included Arpachshad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor, Tira, and Abram, later renamed Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael had twelve sons who were born in the following order. Nebaioth, Heder, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Jeter, Naphish, and Kedema. Abraham and his slave woman Keturah had six sons, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. Midian was the father of Epha, Epher, Hanok, Abida, and Eldea. Abraham's son Isaac was the father of Esau and Jacob. Esau was the father of Eliphaz, Ruel, Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. Eliphaz was the father of Teman, Omar, Zephi, Gadam, Kenaz, Timnah, and Amalek. Ruel was the father of Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. Seir was the father of Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. Lotan was the father of Horai and Homam. Lotan's sister was Timnah. Shobal was the father of Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shephi, and Onam. Zibion was the father of Aya and Ana. Ana was the father of Dishan and the grandfather of Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Kiran. Ezer was the father of Bilhan, Zeavan, and Jaakan. Dishan was the father of Uz and Aaron. Before kings ruled in Israel, Bela son of Beor ruled the country of Edom from its capital of Dinhaba. After Bela's death, Jobab son of Zerah from Basra became king. After Jobab's death, Husham from the land of Teman became king. After Husham's death, Hadad son of Bedad became king and ruled from Avath. Earlier, Bedad had defeated the Midianites in the territory of Moab. 
After Hadad's death, Samla from Masrekah became king. After Samla's death, Shaul from the town of Rehoboth on the Euphrates River became king. And after Shaul's death, Baal-Hanan, son of Akbor, became king. After Baal-Hanan's death, Hadad ruled from Pi. His wife was Mehedabel, the daughter of Matred and granddaughter of Mezahab. The Edomite clans were Timnah, Alva, Jethoth, Oholabama, Elah, Pinon, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel, and Iram. First Chronicles, Chapter 2 Jacob was the father of twelve sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Judah and his Canaanite wife Bathsheba had three sons, Ur, Onan, and Shelah. But the Lord had Ur put to death, because he disobeyed and did what the Lord hated. Judah and his daughter-in-law Tamar also had two sons, Piraz and Zerah. Piraz was the father of Hezron and Hamel. Zerah was the father of Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calchal, and Darda. Achan, who was a descendant of Zerah and the son of Carmi, caused trouble for Israel, because he kept for himself things that belonged only to the Lord. Ethan's son was Azariah. Hezron was the father of Jeramiel, Ram, and Caleb. Ram was the father of Amenadab and the grandfather of Nashon, a tribal leader of Judah. Nashon's descendants included Salma, Boaz, Obed, and Jesse. Jesse had seven sons, who were born in the following order. Eliab, Abinadab, Shimea, Nathanel, Radai, Ozem, and David. Jesse also had two daughters, Zeruiah and Abigail. Zeruiah was the mother of Abishai, Joab, and Asahel. Abigail's husband was Jether, who was a descendant of Ishmael, and their son was Amasa. Hezron's son Caleb married Azuba, and their daughter was Jerioth, the mother of Jeshur, Shobab, and Arden. After the death of Azuba, Caleb married Ephrath. Their son Hur was the father of Uri and the grandfather of Bezalel. When Hezron was sixty years old, he married the daughter of Maker, who settled the region of Gilead. Their son Segub was the father of Jair, who ruled twenty-three villages in the region of Gilead. Sometime later, the nations of Geshur and Aram captured sixty towns in that region, including the villages that belonged to Jair, as well as the town of Kenath and the nearby villages. Everyone from the region of Gilead was a descendant of Maker. After the death of Hezron, Caleb married Ephrathah, his father's wife. Their son was Asher, who later settled the town of Tekoa. Jeramiel, Hezron's oldest son, was the father of Ram, Buna, Oran, Ozem, and Ahijah. Jeramiel had a second wife, Atara, who gave birth to Onam. Ram was the father of Maaz, Jamin, and Eker. Onam was the father of Shammai and Jada. Shammai was the father of Nadab and Abishur. Abishur married Abihail, and their two sons were Aban and Molid. Nadab was the father of Selad and Apaim. Selad had no children. Apaim's son was Aishai, the father of Shishan, and the grandfather of Alai. Jada was the father of Jether and Jonathan. Jether had no children, but Jonathan had two sons, Peleth and Zaza. Shishan had no sons, and so he let one of his daughters marry Jarha, his Egyptian slave. Their son was Atai, the father of Nathan and the grandfather of Zabad. Zabad's descendants included Ephlal, Obed, Jehu, Azariah, Helaz, Eliasa, Sismai, Shalom, Jechamiah, and Elishama. Caleb, Jeramiel's brother, had the following descendants, Mesha, Ziph, Marisha, Hebron, and Hebron's four sons, Korah, Tapua, Rechem, and Shema.
Shema was the father of Raham and the grandfather of Jorkiam. Rekam was the father of Shammai, the grandfather of Maon, and the great-grandfather of Bethzur. Ephah was one of Caleb's wives, and their sons were Haran, Moza, and Gezes. Haran named his son after his brother Gezes. Ephah was the daughter of Jadai, who was also the father of Regum, Jotham, Gishan, Pelet, and Sheath. Maacah was another of Caleb's wives, and their sons were Sheber and Tirhana. Later they had two more sons, Sheath, the father of Madmana, and Sheva, the father of Macbina and Gibeah. Caleb's daughter was Aksa. All of these were Caleb's descendants. Her, the oldest son of Caleb and Ephrathah, had three sons, Shobal, Selma, and Haraf, who settled the town of beth Gader. Shobal, who settled the town of kiriath Jearim, was the ancestor of Haroa, half of the Menuhath clan, and the clans that lived near kiriath Jearim. They were the Ithrites, the Puthites, the Shumathites, and the Mishraites. The Zorathites and the Eshtaolites were descendants of the Mishraites. Salma settled the town of Bethlehem and was the ancestor of the Natophathites, the people of Atroth Beth Joab, half of the Manahathite clan and the Zorites. Salma was also the ancestor of the clans in Jabez that kept the court and government records. They were the Tirathites, the Shimeathites, and the Sukathites. These clans were the descendants of Hamath the Kenite, who was also the ancestor of the Rechabites. First Chronicles, Chapter 3 King David ruled from Hebron for seven years and six months, and during that time he had six sons, who were born in the following order, Amnon, Daniel, Absalom, Adonijah, Shephatiah, and Ithraim. Ahinoam from Jezreel was the mother of Amnon. Abigail from Carmel was the mother of Daniel. Maacah, daughter of King Talmai of Gesher, was the mother of Absalom. Haggith was the mother of Adonijah. Abital was the mother of Shephatiah. And Eglah was the mother of Ithraim. David then ruled from Jerusalem for 33 years. And during that time he had 13 more sons. His wife Bathsheba, daughter of Amiel, gave birth to Shimea, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. David's other sons included Ibhar, Elishua, Eliphalet, Noga, Nephig, Japhiah, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. David's other wives also gave birth to sons. Tamar was his daughter. Solomon's descendants included the following kings, Rehoboam, Abijah, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, Joash, Amaziah, Azariah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Amon, and Josiah, and his four sons, Johanan, Jehoiakim, Zedekiah, and Jehoahaz. Jehoiakim was the father of Jehoiakim and Zedekiah. Jehoiakim, who was taken to Babylon as a prisoner, had seven sons, Shealtiel, Malchiram, Padiah, Shenazer, Jechamiah, Hoshima, and Nedabiah. Padiah had two sons, Zerubbabel and Shimei. Zerubbabel was the father of Meshulam, Hananiah, and Shalomath, their sister. He also had five other sons, Hashuba, Ohel, Berechiah, Hasadiah, and Jushabhesed. Hananiah's descendants were Pelatiah, Jeshiah, Rephiah, Arnon, Obadiah, and Shechaniah, the father of Shemaiah, and the grandfather of Hattush, Igel, Bariah, Neriah, and Shaphat. Neriah was the father of Elioenai, Hizkiah, and Azrakam. Elioenai was the father of Hodaviah, Eliashib, Peliah, Akab, Johanan, Deliah, and Anani. First Chronicles, Chapter 4 Judah was the father of five sons, Piraz, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobal. 
Shobal was the father of Riah, the grandfather of Jahath, and the great-grandfather of Ahumai and Lahad. These men all belonged to the Zorathite clan. Hur was the oldest son of Caleb and Ephrathah. Some of his descendants settled the town of Bethlehem. Hur's other descendants included Etam, Penuel, and Ezer. Etam's sons were Jezreel, Ishma, and Idbash, and his daughter was Hazel Elponi. Penuel settled the town of Geder, and Ezer settled the town of Husha. Asher, who settled the town of Tekoa, had two wives, Hila and Neera. Asher and Neera were the parents of Ahuzam, Hefer, Temani, and Heahashtari. Asher and Hila were the parents of Zirath, Izhar, and Ethnan. Kaz, the father of Anab and Zobiba, was also the ancestor of the clans of Aharhel, the son of Haram. Jabez was a man who got his name because of the pain he caused his mother during birth. But he was still the most respected son in his family. One day he prayed to Israel's God. Please bless me and give me a lot of land. Be with me so I will be safe from harm. And God did just what Jabez had asked. Caleb was the brother of Shuha and the father of Mehir. Later, Mehir had a son, Eshton, whose three sons were Beth Rapha, Pasea, and Tehina. It was Tehina who settled the town of Nahash. These men and their families lived in the town of Rika. Kenaz was the father of Othniel and Sariah. Othniel had two sons, Hathath and Meonathai, who was the father of Ophrah. Sariah was the father of Joab, who settled a place called Valley of Crafts, because the people who lived there were experts in making things. Caleb, son of Jephunneh, had three sons, Iru, Elah, and Naam. Elah was the father of Kenaz. Jehalalel was the father of Ziph, Zipha, Tyria, and Azarel. Ezra was the father of Jether, Mirad, Epher, and Jalen. Mirad was married to Bethiah, the daughter of the king of Egypt. They had a daughter named Miriam and two sons, Shammai and Ishba. It was Ishba who settled the town of Eshtemoa. Mirad was also married to a woman from the tribe of Judah, and their sons were Jared, Heber, and Jekuthiel. Jared settled the town of Geder, Heber settled the town of Soko, and Jekuthiel settled the town of Zenoah. A man named Hodiah was married to the sister of Nahum. Hodiah's descendants included Keilah of the Garmite clan and Eshtemoa of the Maacathite clan. Shimon was the father of Amnon, Rinna, Ben-Hanan, and Tylan. Ishai was the father of Zoheth and Ben-Zoheth. Judah also had a son named Shelah, whose descendants included Jochum and the people of the town of Koziba, as well as Ur, who settled the town of Lika, and Laeda, who settled the town of Marisha. The people who lived in Beth Ashbia were also descendants of Shelah, and they were experts in weaving cloth. Shelah was the ancestor of Joash and Saraph, two men who married Moabite women and then settled near Bethlehem. But these family records are very old. The members of these clans were the potters who lived in the towns of Nataim and Gadira, and worked for the king. Simeon had five sons, Nemuel, Jamin, Jareb, Zira, and Shaul. The descendants of Shaul included his son Shalom, his grandson Mibsam, and his great-grandson Mishma. The descendants of Mishma included his son Hamuel, his grandson Zachar, and his great-grandson Shimei. Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters. But his brothers did not have as many children, so the Simeon tribe was smaller than the Judah tribe. Before David became king, the people of the Simeon tribe lived in the following towns, Beersheba, Molada, Hazer Shoal, Bilha, Ezem, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markaboth, Hazer Susim, Beth Birai, and Shearaim. They also lived in the five villages of Etam, Ain, Rimmon, Token, and Ashan, as well as in the nearby villages as far as the town of Baal.
These are the places where Simeon's descendants had settled according to their own family records. As their families and clans became larger, the people of Simeon had the following leaders. Meshobab, Jamlech, Josha, son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu, Elioenai, Jacoba, Jeshohiah, Asahiah, Adiel, Jesimiel, Benina, and Ziza. When the people needed more pasture land for their flocks and herds, they looked as far as the eastern side of the valley where the town of Girar is located, and they found a lot of good pasture land that was quiet and undisturbed. This had once belonged to the Hamites. But when Hezekiah was king of Judah, the descendants of Simeon attacked and forced the Hamites and the Meunites off the land, then settled there. Sometime later, 500 men from the Simeon tribe went into Edom under the command of Pelatiah, Neariah, Rephiah, and Uzziel, the sons of Ishai. They killed the last of the Amalekites and lived there from then on. First Chronicles, Chapter 5 Reuben was the oldest son of Jacob, but he lost his rights as the firstborn son because he slept with one of his father's wives. The honor of the firstborn son was then given to Joseph, even though it was the Judah tribe that became the most powerful and produced a leader. Reuben had four sons, Hanuk, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel included Shemaiah, Gog, Shimei, Micah, Reiah, Baal, and Beera, a leader of the Reuben tribe. Later, King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria took Beera away as prisoner. The family records also include Jeiel, who was a clan leader, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, and grandson of Shema of the Joel clan. They lived in the territory around the town of Aror, as far north as Nebo and baal Meam and as far east as the desert, just west of the Euphrates River. They needed this much land because they owned too many cattle to keep them all in Gilead. When Saul was king, the Reuben tribe attacked and defeated the Hagrites, then took over their land east of Gilead. The tribe of Gad lived in the region of Bashan, north of the Reuben tribe. Gad's territory extended all the way to the town of Salica. Some of the clan leaders were Joel, Shapham, Jani, and Shaphat. Their relatives included Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Jorai, Jacan, Zia, and Eber. They were all descendants of Abihail, whose family line went back through Hurai, Jeroah, Gilead, Michael, Jeshishai, Jado, and Buzz. Ahai, the son of Abdiel, and the grandson of Gunai, was the leader of their clan. The people of Gad lived in the towns and the regions of Bashan and Gilead, as well as in the pasture land of Sharon. Their family records were written when Jotham was king of Judah and Jeroboam was king of Israel. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh had 44,760 soldiers trained to fight in battle with shields, swords, bows, and arrows. They fought against the Hagrites and the tribes of Jeter, Naphish, and Nodab. Whenever these soldiers went to war against their enemies, they prayed to God and trusted Him to help. That's why the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh defeated the Hagrites and their allies. These Israelite tribes captured 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 people. Many of the Hagrites died in battle because God was fighting this battle against them. The tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh lived in that territory until they were taken as prisoners to Assyria. East Manasseh was a large tribe, so its people settled in the northern region of Bashan, as far north as Baal Hermon, Sinar, and Mount Hermon. Ephor, Ishai, Eliel, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jadiel were their clan leaders. They were well-known leaders and brave soldiers. The people of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh were unfaithful to the God their ancestors had worshipped, and they started worshipping the gods of the nations that God had forced out of Canaan. So God sent King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria to attack these Israelite tribes.
The king led them away as prisoners to Assyria, and from then on he forced them to live in Hala, Habor, Hara, and near the Gozan River. 1 Chronicles, Chapter 6 Levi was the father of Gershon, Kohath, and Mirari. Kohath was the father of Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uzziel. Amram was the father of Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Aaron had four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar's descendants included Phinehas, Abishua, Buckai, Uzai, Zerahiah, Miraioth, Amariah, Ahitab, Zadok, Ahimeaz, Azariah, Johanan, Azariah the priest who served in the temple built by King Solomon, Amariah, Ahitab, Zadok, Shalom, Hilkiah, Azariah, Sariah, and Jehozadak. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia took Jehozadak to Babylon as prisoner when the Lord let the people of Judah and Jerusalem be dragged from their land. Levi's three sons had sons of their own. Gershon was the father of Libni and Shimei. Kohath was the father of Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uzziel. Mirari was the father of Malai and Mushai. These descendants of Levi each became leaders of their own clans. Gershon's descendants included Libni, Jahath, Zimma, Joah, Ido, Zerah, and Jeatharai. Kohath's descendants included Aminadab, Korah, Aser, Elkanah, Ibiasaph, Aser, Tehath, Uriel, Uzziah, and Shaul. Elkanah was the father of Amasai and Ahimoth. Ahimoth's descendants included Elkanah, Zophai, Nahath, Eliab, Jeroham, and Elkanah. Samuel was the father of Joel and Abijah, born in that order. Mirari's descendants included Malai, Libni, Shimei, Uzzah, Shimea, Haggaiah, and Uzziah. After King David had the sacred chest moved to Jerusalem, he appointed musicians from the Levi tribe to be in charge of the music at the place of worship. These musicians served at the sacred tent and later at the Lord's temple that King Solomon built. Here is a list of these musicians and their family lines. Heman from the Kohathite clan was the director. His ancestors went all the way back to Jacob and included Joel, Samuel, Elkanah, Jeroham, Eliel, Toa, Zoph, Elkanah, Mahath, Amasai, Elkanah, Joel, Azariah, Zephaniah, Tehath, Aser, Ebiasaph, Korah, Izhar, Kohath, Levi. Asaph was Heman's relative and served as his assistant. Asaph's ancestors included Birakiah, Shimea, Michael, Baasiah, Malkijah, Ethni, Zira, Adiah, Ethan, Zima, Shimei, Jahath, Gershon, and Levi. Ethan was also Heman's relative and served as his assistant. Ethan belonged to the Mirari clan, and his ancestors included Kishai, Abdi, Malak, Hashabiah, Amaziah, Hilkiah, Amzai, Bani, Shemer, Malai, Mushai, Mirari, and Levi. The rest of the Levites were appointed to work at the sacred tent. Only Aaron and his descendants were allowed to offer sacrifices and incense on the two altars at the sacred tent. They were in charge of the most holy place and the ceremonies to forgive sins, just as God's servant Moses had commanded. Aaron's descendants included his son Eleazar, Phinehas, Abishua, Buckai, Uzai, Zerahiah, Mirioth, Amariah, Ahitab, Zadok, and Ahimeaz. Aaron's descendants belonged to the Levite clan of Kohath, and they were the first group chosen to receive towns to live in. They received the town of Hebron in the territory of Judah and the pasture land around it. 
But the farmland and villages around Hebron were given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So Aaron's descendants received the following safe towns and the pasture land around them, Hebron, Libna, Jatter, Eshtemoah, Hylon, Deber, Ashan, and Beth Shemesh. From the Benjamin tribe, they were given the towns of Geba, Alameth, and Anathoth, and the pasture land around them. Thirteen towns were given to Aaron's descendants. The rest of the Levite clan of Kohath received ten towns from West Manasseh. The Levite clan of Gershon received thirteen towns from the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and East Manasseh in Bashan. The Levite clan of Mirari received twelve towns from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the people of Israel gave the Levites towns to live in and the pasture land around them. All the towns were chosen with the Lord's help, including those towns from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. Some of the families of the Kohath clan received their towns from the tribe of Ephraim. These families received the following safe towns and the pasture land around them. Shechem in the hill country, Gezer, Jokmeam, Beth Horon, Ijalon, and Gathrimim. And from West Manasseh, they received Aner and Biliam, together with their pasture land. The Gershonite clan received two towns from the tribe of East Manasseh, Golan and Bashan, and Ashtaroth, including the pasture land around them. The Gershonites also received four towns from the tribe of Issachar, Kedesh, Deborath, Ramoth, and Anam, including the pasture land around them. The Gershonites received four towns from the tribe of Asher, Meshel, Abdon, Hukok, and Rehob, including the pasture land around them. Finally, the Gershonites received three towns from the tribe of Naphtali, Kedesh and Galilee, Hammon, and Kiriathaim, including the pasture land around them. The rest of the Mirari clan received the towns of Ramono and Tabor, and their pasture land from the tribe of Zebulun. They also received four towns east of the Jordan River from the tribe of Reuben, Bezer in the flatlands, Jaza, Kedemoth, and Mephaath, including the pastures around them. And from the tribe of Gad, the Mirarites received the towns of Ramoth and Gilead, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, including the pasture land around them. First Chronicles chapter 7 Issachar was the father of four sons, Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. Tola was the father of Uzai, Rephiah, Jeriel, Jamai, Ibsam, and Shemuel, who were all brave soldiers and family leaders in their clan. There were 22,600 people in Tola's family by the time David became king. Uzai was the father of Israhiah and the grandfather of Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishiah, who were also family leaders. Their families were so large that they had 36,000 soldiers in their clans. In fact, according to family records, the tribe of Issachar had a total of 87,000 warriors. Benjamin was the father of three sons, Bela, Beker, and Jediael. Bela was the father of Esbon, Uzai, Uzziel, Jeremoth, and Eri. They were all brave soldiers and family leaders in their father's clan. The number of soldiers in their clan was 22,034. Beaker was the father of Zemira, Joash, Eliezer, Elioenai, Amri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Alameth. The official family records listed 20,200 soldiers in the families of this clan, as well as their family leaders. Jediael was the father of Bilhan and the grandfather of Jeush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kanaanah, Zethan, Tarshish, and Ahishahar. They were family leaders in their clan, which had 17,200 soldiers prepared to fight in battle. Ur was the father of Shuppam and Huppam, who also belonged to this clan. Dan was the father of Hushim. Naphtali's mother was Bilhah, and he was the father of Jaziel, 
Gunai, Jezer, and Shalom. Manasseh and his Syrian wife were the parents of Azrael and Maker, the father of Gilead. Maker found a wife for Huppim and one for Shuppim. Maker had a sister named Maacah. Zelophehad was also a descendant of Manasseh, and he had five daughters. Maker and his wife Maacah were the parents of Pirish and Shirish. Pirish was the father of Ulam and Recham. Ulam was the father of Bedan. These were all descendants of Gilead, the son of Maker, and the grandson of Manasseh. Gilead's sister, Hamolaketh, was the mother of Ishad, Abiezer, and Mala. Shemida, another descendant of Manasseh, was the father of Ahian, Shechem, Lichai, and Aniam. Ephraim was the father of Shuthala, and the ancestor of Birid, Tehath, Eliada, Tehath, Zabad, and Shuthala. Ephraim had two other sons, Ezer and Iliad. But they were killed when they tried to steal livestock from the people who lived in the territory of Gath. Ephraim mourned for his sons a long time, and his relatives came to comfort him. Sometime later, his wife gave birth to another son, and Ephraim named him Beriah, because he was born during a time of misery. Ephraim's daughter was Shira. She built the towns of Lower Beth Horon, Upper Beth Horon, and Uzan Shira. Ephraim also had a son named Repha, and his descendants included Resheph, Tila, Tehan, Ladan, Amihud, Elishama, Nun, and Joshua. The descendants of Ephraim took over the territory as far south as Bethel, as far east as Naaran, and as far west as Gezer. Their territory included all the villages around these towns, as well as Shechem, Aya, and the nearby villages. The descendants of Manasseh settled in the territory that included Beth Shean, Teanach, Megiddo, Dor, and the nearby villages. The descendants of Joseph lived in these towns and villages. Asher had four sons, Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Beriah, and one daughter, Sira. Beriah was the father of Heber, and Malchiel the father of Birzaeth. Heber was the father of three sons, Japhlet, Shomer, and Hotham, and one daughter, Shua. Japhlet was the father of Pesach, Bimhal, and Ashbath. Shomer was the father of Ahai, Roga, Hubba, and Aram. And Japhlet's brother Hotham was the father of Zopha, Imna, Shelish, and Amal. Zopha was the father of Sua, Harnifer, Shual, Birai, Imra, Bezer, Had, Shama, Shilsha, Ithran, and Bira. Jether was the father of Jephunneh, Pispa, and Ara. Ulla was the father of Ara, Haniel, and Reziah. These were the descendants of Asher, and they were all respected family leaders and brave soldiers. The tribe of Asher had a total of 26,000 soldiers. 1 Chronicles, Chapter 8 Benjamin had five sons, who were born in the following order, Bela, Ashbel, Ahara, Noha, and Rapha. Bela was the father of Adder, Gira, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gira, Shephuthan, and Huram. Ehud was the father of Naaman, Ahijah, and Gira. They were clan leaders in the town of Geba, but were later forced to move to the town of Manahath, and Gira led the way. He had two sons, Uzzah and Ahihud. Shehareim and his wife Husham had two sons, Abitub and Elpael. But Shehareim later divorced her and his other wife, Beerah. Then he moved to the country of Moab and married Hodesh, and they had seven sons, Jobab, Zibiah, Misha, Malcam, Jeaz, Sakiah, and Mirma. They were all family leaders in his clan. Elpael was the father of Eber, Misham, and Shemad, who settled the towns of Ono and Lod, as well as the nearby villages. 
Biraya and Shima were family leaders in the clan that lived in the town of Ajalon and that forced out the people of Gath. Biraya's descendants included Ahio, Sheshak, Jeremoth, Zebediah, Arad, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, and Joha. Elpael's descendants included Zebediah, Meshulam, Hizkai, Heber, Ishmirai, Isliah, and Jobab. Shimei's descendants included Jacob, Zikri, Zabdi, Eliinai, Zolithai, Eliel, Adiah, Biriah, and Shimrath. Sheshach's descendants included Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Anthathijah, Ifdia, and Penuel. Jeroham's descendants included Shamshirai, Shehariah, Athaliah, Jairashiah, Elijah, and Zikri. These were the family leaders in their ancestors' clan, and they and their descendants lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel settled the town of Gibeon. He and his wife, Maacah, lived there along with their sons, who were born in the following order. Abdon, Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zeker, and Mikloth, the father of Shimea. Some of them went to live in Jerusalem near their relatives. Ner was the father of Kish and the grandfather of King Saul. Saul had four sons, Jonathan, Malchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Mirabaal, the grandfather of Micah, and the great-grandfather of Python, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. Saul's other descendants were Jehoiada, Alameth, Asmaveth, Zimri, Moza, Binia, Repha, Eliasa, Azel, as well as Azel's six sons, Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shiriah, Obadiah, and Hanan. Azel's brother Eshek was the father of Ulam, Jeush, and Eliphalet. Ulam's sons were brave soldiers who were experts at using a bow and arrows. They had a total of 150 children and grandchildren. All of these belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. First Chronicles, Chapter 9 Everyone in Israel was listed in the official family records that were included in the history of Israel's kings. The people of Judah were taken to Babylonia as prisoners because they sinned against the Lord. And the first people to return to their towns included priests, Levites, temple workers, and other Israelites. People from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh settled in Jerusalem. There were 690 people from the Judah tribe who settled in Jerusalem. They were all descendants of Judah's three sons, Piraz, Shelah, and Zerah. Their leaders were Uthai, Esaiah, and Jeuel. Uthai was the son of Amihud and a descendant of Amri, Imri, Benai, and Piraz. Asaiah was a descendant of Shelah. Jeuel was a descendant of Zerah. There were also 956 family leaders from the Benjamin tribe who settled in Jerusalem. They included Salu, son of Meshulam, grandson of Hodaviah, and great-grandson of Hasanua, Ibniah, son of Jeroham, Elah, son of Uzai, and grandson of Mikri, Meshulam, son of Shephatiah, grandson of Reuel, and great-grandson of Ibnijah. Here is a list of priests who settled in Jerusalem. Jediah, Jehoiarib, Jachin, Azariah, who was a temple official and whose ancestors included Hilkiah, Meshulam, Zadok, Miriath, and Ahitub. Adiah, son of Jeroham, whose ancestors included Pasher and Malchijah. Maasai, son of Adiel, whose ancestors included Jazerah, Meshulam, Meshulamoth, and Immer. There was a total of 1,760 priests, all of them family leaders in their clan and trained in the work at the temple. Here is a list of Levites who settled in Jerusalem. Shemaiah from the Mirari clan, whose ancestors included Hashab, Azrakam, and Hashabiah. Bakbaker, Hirish, 
Galal, Madaniah, son of Micah, whose ancestors included Zikri and Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shemaiah, whose ancestors included Galal and Jeduthun, Berechiah, son of Asa, and grandson of Elkanah, who had lived in the villages near the town of Natopha. Shalem, Akab, Talman, Ahiman, and their relatives were the guards at the temple gates. Shalem was the leader of this clan, and for a long time they had been the guards at the king's gate on the east side of the city. Before that, their ancestors guarded the entrance to the Levite camp. Shalem, son of Cori, as well as the other men in the Korahite clan, guarded the entrance to the temple just as their ancestors had guarded the entrance to the sacred tent. Phinehas, son of Eleazar, had supervised their work because the Lord was with him. Zechariah, son of Meshelamiah, was also one of the guards at the temple. There was a total of 212 guards, all of them listed in the family records in their towns. Their ancestors had been chosen by King David and by Samuel the prophet to be responsible for this work, and now they guarded the temple gates. There was one full-time guard appointed to each of the four sides of the temple. Their assistants lived in the villages outside the city, and every seven days a group of them would come into the city and take their turn at guard duty. The four full-time guards were Levites, and they supervised the other guards and were responsible for the rooms in the temple and the supplies kept there. They guarded the temple day and night and opened its doors every morning. Some of the Levites were responsible for the equipment used in worship at the temple, and they had to count everything before and after it was used. Others were responsible for the temple furnishings and its sacred objects, as well as the flour, wine, olive oil, incense, and spices. But only the priests could mix the spices. Mattathiah, Shalom's oldest son, was a member of the Levite clan of Korah, and he was in charge of baking the bread used for offerings. The Levites from the Kohath clan were in charge of baking the sacred loaves of bread for each Sabbath. The Levite family leaders, who were the musicians, also lived at the temple. They had no other responsibilities because they were on duty day and night. All of these men were family leaders in the Levi tribe and were listed that way in their family records. They lived in Jerusalem. Jeiel had settled the town of Gibeon, where he and his wife Maacah lived. They had ten sons who were born in the following order. Abdon, Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth, the father of Shimeon. Some of them went to live in Jerusalem near their relatives. Ner was the father of Kish and the grandfather of King Saul. Saul had four sons, Jonathan, Malchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Merabael, the grandfather of Micah, and the great-grandfather of Python, Melech, Taria, and Ahaz. The descendants of Ahaz included Jara, Alamoth, Asmaveth, Zimri, Moza, Binia, Rephiah, Eliasa, and Azel and his six sons, Azrakam, Bokiru, Ishmael, Shariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. First Chronicles chapter 10 The Philistines fought against Israel in a battle at Mount Gilboa. Israel's soldiers ran from the Philistines, and many of them were killed. The Philistines closed in on Saul and his sons and killed three of them, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua. The fighting was fierce around Saul, and he was badly wounded by enemy arrows. Saul told the soldier who carried his weapons, Kill me with your sword. I don't want those godless Philistines to torture and make fun of me. But the soldier was afraid to kill him. Then Saul stuck himself in the stomach with his own sword and fell on the blade. When the soldier realized that Saul was dead, he killed himself in the same way. Saul, three of his sons, and all his male relatives were dead. The Israelites who lived in Jezreel Valley learned that their army had run away and that Saul and his sons were dead. They ran away too, and the Philistines moved into the towns the Israelites left behind. The next day, the Philistines came back to the battlefield to carry away the weapons of the dead Israelite soldiers. 
When they found the bodies of Saul and his sons on Mount Gilboa, they took Saul's weapons, pulled off his armor, and cut off his head. Then they sent messengers everywhere in Philistia to spread the news among their people and to thank the idols of their gods. They put Saul's armor in the temple of their gods and hung his head in the temple of their god Dagon. When the people who lived in Jabesh and Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, some brave men went to get his body and the bodies of his three sons. The men brought the bodies back to Jabesh, where they buried them under an oak tree. Then, for seven days, they went without eating to show their sorrow. Saul died because he was unfaithful and disobeyed the Lord. He even asked advice from a woman who talked to spirits of the dead, instead of asking the Lord. So the Lord had Saul killed and gave his kingdom to David, the son of Jesse. 1 Chronicles chapter 11 Israel's leaders met with David at Hebron and said, We are your relatives, and we know that you have led our army into battle even when Saul was still our king. The Lord God has promised that you would rule our country and take care of us like a shepherd. So we have come to crown you king of Israel. David made an agreement with the leaders and asked the Lord to be their witness. Then the leaders poured olive oil on David's head to show that he was now king of Israel. This happened just as the Lord's prophet Samuel had said. Jerusalem was called Jebus at the time, and David led Israel's army to attack the town. The Jebusite said, You won't be able to get in here. But David captured the fortress of Mount Zion, which is now called the city of David. David had told his troops, The first soldier to kill a Jebusite will become my army commander. And since Joab, son of Zeruiah, attacked first, he became commander. Later, David moved to the fortress. That's why it's called the City of David. He had the city rebuilt, starting at the landfill on the east side. Meanwhile, Joab supervised the repairs to the rest of the city. David became a great and strong ruler, because the Lord All-Powerful was on his side. The Lord had promised that David would become king. And so everyone in Israel gave David their support. Certain warriors also helped keep his kingdom strong. The first of these warriors was Jashabim, the son of Hakmoni, the leader of the three warriors. In one battle, he killed 300 men with his spear. Another one of the three warriors was Eliezer, son of Dodo the Ahohite. During a battle against the Philistines at Pasdemon, all the Israelite soldiers ran away except Eliezer, who stayed with David. They took their positions in a nearby barley field and defeated the Philistines. The Lord gave Israel a great victory that day. One time, the three warriors went to meet David among the rocks at Adullam Cave. The Philistine army had set up camp in Rephaim Valley and had taken over Bethlehem. David was in a fortress, and he said, I'm very thirsty. I wish I had a drink of water from the well by the gate to Bethlehem. The three warriors sneaked through the Philistine camp and got some water from the well near Bethlehem's gate. They took it back to David, but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured out the water as a sacrifice to the Lord and said, Drinking this water would be like drinking the blood of these men who risked their lives to get it for me. The three warriors did these brave deeds. Joab's brother, Abishai, was the leader of the 30 warriors, and in one battle he killed 300 men with his spear. He was just as famous as the three warriors, and was more famous than the rest of the 30 warriors. He was their commander, but he never became one of the three warriors. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was a brave man from Kabziel, who did some amazing things. One time he killed two of Moab's best fighters, and one snowy day he went into a pit and killed a lion. Another time he killed an Egyptian, who was seven and a half feet tall and was armed with a spear. Benaiah only had a club, so he grabbed the spear from the Egyptian and killed him with it. Benaiah did things like that. He was just as brave as the three warriors, even though he never became one of them. And he was certainly as famous as the rest of the thirty warriors. So David made him the leader of his own bodyguard. Here is a list of the other famous warriors. Asahel, the brother of Joab. Elhanan, 
the son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shamath from Harar, Helaz from Pilon, Ira, the son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sibekai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahohite, Meari from Natopha, Helad the son of Baana from Natopha, Ithai the son of Ribai from Gibeah in Benjamin, Beniah from Pirathon, Hurai from near the streams on Mount Gaash, Abiel from Arba, Asmaveth from Baharam, Eliaba from Shaalban, Hashem the Gizanite, Jonathan the son of Shagi from Harar, Ahiam the son of Sekar the Hararite, Eliphal the son of Ur, Hefer from Makira, Ahijah from Pelon, Hezro from Carmel, Neari the son of Ezbi, Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar the son of Hagri, Zilak from Ammon, Neharai from Beeroth, who carried Joab's weapons, Ira the Ithrite, Garab the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad the son of Ali, Adonah the son of Shiza, a leader in the Reuben tribe, and thirty of his soldiers, Hanan the son of Maacah, Joshaphat from Mitham, Uzziah from Ashtarah, Shema and Jeiel the sons of Hotham from Aror, Jediael and Joha the sons of Shimri from Tiz, Eliel from Maava, Jerabai and Joshaviah the sons of Elmaim. Ithma from Moab, Eliel, Obed, and Jaasiel from Mizoba. First Chronicles, chapter 12. Some time earlier, David had gone to live in the town of Ziklag to escape from King Saul. While David was there, several brave warriors joined him to help fight his battles. Several of these warriors were from King Saul's own tribe of Benjamin. They were experts at using a bow and arrows, and they could shoot an arrow or sling a stone with either hand. Their leaders were Ahiezer and Joash, the sons of Shemaiah from Gibeah. Here is a list of those men from Benjamin. Jeziel and Pilat, the sons of Asmaveth. Beraka and Jehu from Anathoth. Ishmaiah from Gibeon, who was the leader of the thirty warriors. Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, and Josabad from Gadira. Eluzai, Jeremoth, Bealiah, Shemariah, and Shephatiah from Haruf. Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel, Joezer, and Jeshobiam from the Korah clan. Joela and Zebediah, the sons of Jeroham from Gedor. Men from the tribe of Gad also joined David at his fortress in the desert and served as his warriors. They were also brave soldiers, fierce as lions and quick as gazelles. They were always prepared to fight with shields and spears. There were eleven of them ranked in the following order. Ezer the leader, then Obadiah, Eliab, Mishmana, Jeremiah, Atai, Eliel, Johanan, Elzabad, Jeremiah, and Machbani. All these men were army officers. Some were high-ranking officers over a thousand troops, and others were officers over a hundred troops. Earlier they had crossed the Jordan River when it flooded, and they chased out the people who lived in the valleys on each side of the river. One time a group of men from the tribes of Benjamin and Judah went to the fortress where David was staying. David met them outside and said, if you are coming as friends to fight on my side, then stay and join us. But if you try to turn me over to my enemies, the God our ancestors worshipped will punish you, because I have done nothing wrong. Amasai, who later became the leader of the thirty warriors, was one of these men who went to David. God's spirit took control of him, and he said, we will join you, David, son of Jesse. You and your followers will always be successful because God fights on your side. So David agreed to let them stay, and he even put them in charge of his soldiers who raided enemy villages. Some of the warriors who joined David were from the tribe of Manasseh. They had earlier gone with David when he agreed to fight on the side of the Philistines against King Saul. But as soon as the Philistine rulers realized that David might turn against them and rejoin Saul, they sent David away to the town of Ziklag. 
That's when the following men from Manasseh joined him. Adna, Josabad, Jediel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilathai. They had all been commanders in Saul's army and brave soldiers, and so David made them officers in his army. They fought on his side when enemy troops attacked. Day after day, new men came to join David, and soon he had a large, powerful army. The kingdom of Israel had been taken away from Saul, and it now belonged to David. He was ruling from Hebron, and thousands of well-trained soldiers from each tribe went there to crown David king of all Israel, just as the Lord had promised. These soldiers, who were always prepared for battle, included 6,800 from Judah, who were armed with shields and spears, 7,100 from Simeon, 4,600 from Levi, including Jehoiada, who was a leader from Aaron's descendants, and his 3,700 men, as well as Zadok, who was a brave soldier, and 22 of his relatives, who were also officers. 3,000 from Benjamin, because this was Saul's own tribe, and most of the men had remained loyal to him. 20,800 from Ephraim, who were not only brave, but also famous in their clans. 18,000 from West Manasseh, who had been chosen to help make David king. 200 leaders from Issachar, along with troops under their command. These leaders knew the right time to do what needed to be done. 50,000 from Zebulun, who were not only loyal, but also trained to use any weapon. 1,000 officers from Naphtali and 37,000 soldiers armed with shields and spears. 28,600 from Dan. 40,000 from Asher, and 120,000 from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh, who were armed with all kinds of weapons. All of these soldiers voluntarily came to Hebron because they wanted David to become king of Israel. In fact, everyone in Israel wanted the same thing. The soldiers stayed in Hebron three days, eating and drinking what their relatives had prepared for them. Other Israelites, from as far away as the territories of Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali, brought cattle and sheep to slaughter for food. They also brought donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen that were loaded down with flour, dried figs, wine, and olive oil. Everyone in Israel was very happy. 1 Chronicles chapter 13 Sometime later, David talked with his army commanders and then announced to the people of Israel, While Saul was king, the sacred chest was ignored. But now it's time to bring the chest to Jerusalem. We will invite everyone in Israel to come here, including the priests and the Levites in the towns surrounded by pasture land. But we will do these things only if you agree and if the Lord our God wants us to. The people agreed this was the right thing to do. David gathered everyone from the Shihor River in Egypt to Lebohamoth in the north. Then he led them to Baalah in Judah, which was also called kiriath Jearim. They went there to get the sacred chest and bring it to Jerusalem, because it belonged to the Lord God, whose throne is above the winged creatures on the lid of the chest. The sacred chest was still at Abinadab's house, and when David and the crowd arrived there, they brought the chest outside and placed it on a new ox cart. Abinadab's sons Uzzah and Ahio guided the cart, while David and the crowd danced and sang praises to the Lord with all their might. They played music on small harps and other stringed instruments, and on tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. But when they came to Kaidan's threshing place, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out and took hold of the chest to stop it from falling. The Lord God was very angry at Uzzah for doing this, and he killed Uzzah right there beside the chest. David then got angry at God for killing Uzzah, so he named that place Attack on Uzzah, and it's been called that ever since. David was afraid what the Lord might do to him, and he asked himself, should I really be the one to take care of the sacred chest? So instead of taking it to Jerusalem, David decided to take it to the home of Obed-Edom, who lived in the town of Gath. The chest stayed there for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom, his family, and everything he owned. 1 Chronicles chapter 14 
King Hiram of Tyre sent some officials to David. They brought along carpenters and stoneworkers and enough cedar logs to build David a palace. David now knew that the Lord had made him a powerful king of Israel for the good of his people. After David moved to Jerusalem, he married more women and had more sons and daughters. His children born there were Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpilat, Noga, Nepheg, Japhiah, Elishama, Bealiada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had become king of Israel, they came to capture him. But David heard about their plan and marched out to meet them in battle. The Philistines had already camped in Rephaim Valley and were raiding the nearby villages. David asked God, Should I attack the Philistines? Will you help me win? The Lord told David, Yes, attack them. I will give you victory. David and his army marched to Baal Perazim, where they attacked and defeated the Philistines. He said, I defeated my enemies because God broke through them like a mighty flood. So he named the place the Lord broke through. Then David ordered his troops to burn the idols that the Philistines had left behind. Sometime later, the Philistines came back into the hill country and camped in Rephaim Valley. David asked God what he should do, and God answered, Don't attack them from the front. Circle around behind them where the balsam trees are. Wait there until you hear the treetops making the sound of marching troops. That sound will mean I have marched out ahead of you to fight the Philistine army. So you must then attack quickly. David obeyed God, and he defeated the Philistines. He even chased them all the way from Gibeon to the entrance to Gezer. From then on, David became even more famous, and the Lord made all the nations afraid of him. 1 Chronicles chapter 15 David had several buildings built in Jerusalem, and he had a tent set up where the sacred chest would be kept. He said, Only Levites will be allowed to carry the chest, because the Lord has chosen them to do that work and to serve him forever. Next, David invited everyone to come to Jerusalem and watch the sacred chest being carried to the place he had set up for it. He also sent for Aaron's descendants and for the Levites. The Levites that came were Uriel, the leader of the Kohath clan, and 120 of his relatives. Asiah, the leader of the Mirari clan, and 220 of his relatives. Joel, the leader of the Gershon clan, and 130 of his relatives. Shemaiah, the leader of the Elizaphan clan, and 200 of his relatives. Eliel, the leader of the Hebron clan, and 80 of his relatives, and Aminadab, the leader of the Uziel clan, with 112 of his relatives. David called together these six Levites and the two priests, Zadok and Abiathar. He said to them, You are the leaders of the clans in the Levi tribe. You and your relatives must first go through the ceremony to make yourselves clean and acceptable to the Lord. Then you may carry the sacred chest that belongs to the Lord God of Israel and bring it to the place I have prepared for it. The first time we tried to bring the chest to Jerusalem, we didn't ask the Lord what he wanted us to do. He was angry at us because you Levites weren't there to carry the chest. The priests and the Levites made themselves clean. They were now ready to carry the sacred chest on poles that rested on their shoulders, just as the Lord had told Moses to do. David then told the leaders to choose some Levites to sing and play music on small harps, other stringed instruments and cymbals. The men chosen to play the cymbals were Heman, the son of Joel, his relative Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and Ethan, the son of Cushiah from the Mirari clan. Some of their assistants played the smaller harps, they were Zechariah, Aziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Anai, Eliab, Maaseah, and Benaiah. Others played the larger harps. They were Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mechnia, Azaziah, and two of the temple guards, Obed-Edom and Jeiel. Kenaniah was chosen to be the music director because he was a skilled musician. Four Levites were then appointed to guard the sacred chest. They were Berechiah, Elkanah, Obed-Edom, and Jehiah. 
Finally, David chose priests to walk in front of the sacred chest and blow trumpets. They were Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nathanael, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer. David, the leaders of Israel, and the army commanders were very happy as they went to Obed-Edom's house to get the sacred chest. God gave the Levites the strength they needed to carry the chest, and so they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David, the Levites, Kenaniah, the music director, and all the musicians were wearing linen robes, and David was also wearing a linen cloth. While the sacred chest was being carried into Jerusalem, everyone was celebrating by shouting and playing music on horns, trumpets, cymbals, harps, and other stringed instruments. Saul's daughter, Michael, looked out her window and watched the chest being brought into David's city. But when she saw David jumping and dancing in honor of the Lord, she was disgusted. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 They put the sacred chest inside the tent that David had set up for it. Then they offered sacrifices to please the Lord and sacrifices to ask his blessing. After David had finished, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord and gave every person in the crowd a small loaf of bread, some meat, and a handful of raisins. David appointed some of the Levites to serve at the sacred chest. They were to play music and sing praises to the Lord God of Israel. Asaph was their leader, and Zechariah was his assistant. Jael, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and another man named Jael were appointed to play small harps and stringed instruments. Asaph himself played the cymbals, and the two priests, Benaiah and Jehaziel, were to blow trumpets every day in front of the sacred chest. That same day, David instructed Asaph and his relatives for the first time to sing these praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord and pray in His name. Tell everyone what He has done. Sing praises to the Lord. Tell about His miracles. Celebrate and worship His holy name with all your heart. Trust the Lord in His mighty power. Worship Him always. Remember His miracles and all His wonders and His fair decisions. You belong to the family of Israel, His servant. You are His chosen ones, the descendants of Jacob. The Lord is our God, bringing justice everywhere on earth. We must never forget His agreement and His promises, not in thousands of years. God made an eternal promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when He said, I'll give you the land of Canaan. At the time there were only a few of us, and we were homeless. We wandered from nation to nation, from one country to another. God did not let anyone mistreat our people. Instead, he protected us by punishing rulers and telling them, Don't touch my chosen leaders or harm my prophets. Everyone on this earth, sing praises to the Lord. Day after day, announce the Lord has saved us. Tell every nation on earth the Lord is wonderful and does marvelous things. The Lord is great and deserves our greatest praise. He is the only God worthy of our worship. Other nations worship idols, but the Lord created the heavens. Give honor and praise to the Lord, whose power and beauty fill his holy temple. Tell everyone of every nation, praise the glorious power of the Lord. He is wonderful. Praise Him and bring an offering into His temple. Worship the Lord, majestic and holy. Everyone on earth now tremble. The world stands firm, never to be shaken. Tell the heavens and the earth to be glad and celebrate and announce to the nations, the Lord is King. Command the ocean to roar with all of its creatures and the fields to rejoice with all of their crops. Then every tree in the forest will sing joyful songs to the Lord. He is coming to judge all people on earth. Praise the Lord because he is good to us and his love never fails. Say to him, save us, Lord God. Bring us back from among the nations. 
let us celebrate and shout in praise of your holy name. Lord God of Israel, you deserve to be praised forever and ever. After David finished, the people shouted, Amen! Praise the Lord! David chose Asaph and the Levites in his clan to be in charge of the daily worship at the place where the sacred chest was kept. Obed-Edom and 68 of his relatives were their assistants, and Hosa and Obed-Edom, the son of Jeduthun, were the guards. David also chose Zadok the priest and his relatives who were priests to serve at the Lord's sacred tent at Gibeon. They were to offer sacrifices on the altar every morning and evening, just as the Lord had commanded in the law he gave Israel. Heman and Jeduthun were their assistants, as well as the other men who had been chosen to praise the Lord for his never-ending love. Heman and Jeduthun were also responsible for blowing the trumpets and for playing the cymbals and other instruments during worship at the tent. The Levites in Jeduthun's clan were the guards at Gibeon. After that, everyone went home, and David went home to his family. 1 Chronicles Chapter 17 Soon after David moved into his new palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Look around. I live in a palace made of cedar, but the sacred chest is kept in a tent. Nathan replied, The Lord is with you. Do what you want. That night, the Lord told Nathan to go to David and tell him, David, you are my servant, so listen carefully. You are not the one to build a temple for me. I didn't live in a temple when I brought my people out of Egypt, and I don't live in one now. A tent has always been my home wherever I have gone with them. I chose special leaders and told them to be like shepherds for my people Israel. But did I ever say anything to even one of them about building a cedar temple for me? David, this is what I, the Lord All-Powerful, say to you. I brought you in from the fields where you took care of sheep, and I made you the leader of my people. Wherever you went, I helped you and destroyed your enemies right in front of your eyes. I have made you one of the most famous people in the world. I have given my people Israel a land of their own where they can live in peace. They will no longer have to tremble with fear. Evil nations won't bother them as they did when I let judges rule my people, and I will keep your enemies from attacking you. Now I promise that, like you, your descendants will be kings. I'll choose one of your sons to be king when you reach the end of your life and are buried beside your ancestors. I'll make him a strong ruler, and no one will be able to take his kingdom away from him. He will be the one to build a temple for me. I will be like a father to him, and he will be like a son to me. I will never put an end to my agreement with him, as I put an end to my agreement with Saul, who was king before you. I will make sure that your son and his descendants will rule my people and my kingdom forever. Nathan told David exactly what the Lord had said. David went into the tent he had set up for the sacred chest. He sat there and prayed, Lord God, my family and I don't deserve what you have already done for us, and yet you have promised to do even more for my descendants. You are treating me as if I am a very important person. I am your servant, and you know my thoughts. What else can I say? except that you have honored me. It was your choice to do these wonderful things for me and to make these promises. No other God is like you, Lord. You alone are God. Everything we have heard about you is true, and there is no other nation on earth like Israel, the nation you rescued from slavery in Egypt to be your own. You became famous by using great and wonderful miracles to force other nations and their gods out of your land so that your people could live here. You have chosen Israel to be your people forever, and you have become their God. Lord God, 
please do what you promised me and my descendants. Then you will be famous forever, and everyone will say, The Lord All-Powerful rules Israel and is their God. My kingdom will be strong because you are my God, and you have promised that my descendants will be kings. That's why I have the courage to pray to you like this, even though I am only your servant. You are the Lord God, and you have made this good promise to me. Now please bless my descendants forever, and let them always be your chosen kings. You have already blessed my family, and I know you will bless us forever. First Chronicles chapter 18 Later, David attacked and defeated the Philistines. He captured their town of Gath and the nearby villages. David also defeated the Moabites, and so they had to accept him as their ruler and pay taxes to him. While King Hadad-Ezer of Zobah was trying to gain control of the territory near the Euphrates River, David met him in battle at Hamath and defeated him. David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 chariot drivers, and 20,000 soldiers, and he crippled all but 100 of the horses. When troops from the Syrian king of Damascus came to help Hadad-Ezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then David stationed some of his troops in Damascus, and the people there had to accept David as their ruler and pay taxes to him. Everywhere David went, the Lord helped him win battles. Hadad-Ezer's officers had carried gold shields, but David took these shields and brought them back to Jerusalem. He also took a lot of bronze from the cities of Tibhath and Kun, which had belonged to Hadad-Ezer. Later, Solomon used this bronze to make the large bowl called the sea and to make the pillars and other furnishings for the temple. King Tau of Hamath and King Hadad-Ezer had been enemies. So when Tau heard that David had defeated Hadad-Ezer's whole army, he sent his son Hadoram to congratulate David on his victory. Hadoram also brought him gifts made of gold, silver, and bronze. David gave these gifts to the Lord, just as he had done with the silver and gold he had captured from Edom, Moab, Ammon, Philistia, and Amalek. Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, defeated the Edomite army in Salt Valley and killed 18,000 of their troops. Then he stationed troops in Edom, and the people there had to accept David as their ruler. Everywhere David went, the Lord gave him victory in war. David ruled all Israel with fairness and justice. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was the commander-in-chief of the army. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, kept the government's records. Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. Shavsha was the secretary. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was the commander of David's bodyguard. David's sons were his highest-ranking officials. First Chronicles chapter 19 Sometime later, King Nahash of Ammon died, and his son Hanan became king. David said, Nahash was kind to me, so I will be kind to his son. He sent some officials to Ammon to tell Hanan how sorry he was that his father had died. But when David's officials arrived at Ammon, the Ammonite leaders said to Hanan, Do you really believe King David is honoring your father by sending these men to comfort you? He probably sent them to spy on our country so he could come and destroy it. Hanan arrested David's officials and had their beard shaved off and their robes cut off just below the waist, and then he sent them away. They were terribly ashamed. When David found out what had happened to his officials, he sent a message that told them, Stay in Jericho until your beards grow back. Then you can come home. The Ammonites realized they had made David furious. So they paid over 30 tons of silver to hire chariot troops from Mesopotamia and from the Syrian kingdoms of Maacha and Zobah. 32,000 troops, as well as the king of Maacha and his army, came and camped near Medaba. The Ammonite troops also left their towns and came to prepare for battle. David heard what was happening, and he sent out Joab with his army, 
The Ammonite troops marched to the entrance of the city and prepared for battle, while the Syrian troops took their positions in the open fields. Joab saw that the enemy troops were lined up on both sides of him. So he picked some of the best Israelite soldiers to fight the Syrians. Then he put his brother Abishai in command of the rest of the army and told them to fight against the Ammonites. Joab told his brother, If the Syrians are too much for me to handle, come and help me. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I'll come and help you. Be brave and fight hard to protect our people and the towns of our Lord God. I pray he will do whatever pleases him. Joab and his soldiers attacked the Syrians, and the Syrians ran from them. When the Ammonite troops saw that the Syrians had run away, they ran from Abishai's soldiers and went back into their own city. Joab then returned to Jerusalem. As soon as the Syrians realized they had been defeated, they sent for their troops that were stationed on the other side of the Euphrates River. Shofak, the commander of Hadad Ezer's army, led these troops to Ammon. David found out what the Syrians were doing, and he brought Israel's entire army together. They crossed the Jordan River, and he commanded them to take their positions facing the Syrian troops. Soon after the fighting began, the Syrians ran from Israel. David killed 7,000 chariot troops and 40,000 regular soldiers. He also killed Shofak, their commander. When the kings who had been under hadad rule saw that Israel had defeated them, they made peace with David and accepted him as their new ruler. The Syrians never helped the Ammonites again. 1 Chronicles chapter 20 The next spring, the time when kings go to war, Joab marched out in command of the Israelite army and destroyed towns all over the country of Ammon. He attacked the capital of Rabbah and left it in ruins, but David stayed in Jerusalem. Later, David himself went to Rabbah, where he took the crown from the statue of their god Milcom. The crown was made of 75 pounds of gold, and there was a valuable jewel on it. David put the jewel on his crown, then carried off everything else of value. He forced the people of Rabbah to work with saws, iron picks, and axes. He also did the same thing with the people in all the other Ammonite towns. David then led Israel's army back to Jerusalem. Sometime later, Israel fought a battle against the Philistines at Gezer. During this battle, Sibekai from Husha killed Sippai, a descendant of the Rapha, and the Philistines were defeated. In another battle against the Philistines, Elhanan the son of Jair killed Lamai, the brother of Goliath from Gath, whose spear shaft was like a weaver's beam. Another one of the Philistine soldiers, who was a descendant of the Rapha, was as big as a giant and had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. During a battle at Gath, he made fun of Israel, so David's nephew Jonathan killed him. David and his soldiers killed these three men from Gath who were descendants of the Rapha. 1 Chronicles chapter 21 Satan decided to cause trouble for Israel by making David think it was a good idea to find out how many people there were in Israel and Judah. David told Joab and the army commanders, Count everyone in Israel, from the town of Beersheba in the south all the way north to Dan. Then I will know how many people can serve in my army. Joab answered, Your Majesty, even if the Lord made your kingdom a hundred times larger, you would still rule everyone in it. Why do you need to know how many soldiers there are? Don't you think that would make the whole nation angry? But David would not change his mind. And so Joab went everywhere in Israel and Judah and counted the people. He returned to Jerusalem and told David that the total number of men who could serve in the army was 1,100,000 in Israel and 470,000 in Judah. Joab refused to include anyone from the tribes of Levi and Benjamin because he still disagreed with David's orders. David's order to count the people made God angry, and he punished Israel. David prayed, I am your servant, but what I did was stupid and terribly wrong. Please forgive me. The Lord said to Gad, one of David's prophets, Tell David that I will punish him in one of three ways, but he will have to choose which one it will be. 
Gad went to David and told him, You must choose how the Lord will punish you. Will there be three years when the land won't grow enough food for its people? Or will your enemies constantly defeat you for three months? Or will the Lord send a horrible disease to strike your land for three days? Think about it and decide, because I have to give your answer to God who sent me. David was miserable and said, It's a terrible choice to make, but the Lord is kind, and I'd rather have him punish me than for anyone else to do it. So the Lord sent a horrible disease on Israel, and 70,000 Israelites died. Then he sent an angel to destroy the city of Jerusalem. But just as the angel was about to do that, the Lord felt sorry for all the suffering he had caused the people, and he told the angel, Stop! They have suffered enough. This happened at the threshing place that belonged to Arana the Jebusite. David saw the Lord's angel in the air, holding a sword over Jerusalem. He and the leaders of Israel, who were all wearing sackcloth, bowed with their faces to the ground, and David prayed, It's my fault. I sinned by ordering the people to be counted. They have done nothing wrong. They are innocent sheep. Lord God, please punish me and my family. Don't let the disease wipe out your people. The Lord's angel told the prophet Gad to tell David that he must go to Arana's threshing place and build an altar in honor of the Lord. David followed the Lord's instructions. Arana and his four sons were threshing wheat at the time, and when they saw the angel, the four sons ran to hide. Just then David arrived, and when Arana saw him, he stopped his work and bowed down. David said, Would you sell me your threshing place so I can build an altar on it to the Lord? Then this disease will stop killing the people. I'm willing to pay whatever you say it's worth. Arana answered, Take it, your majesty, and do whatever you want with it. I'll even give you the oxen for the sacrifice and the wheat for the grain sacrifice, and you can use the threshing boards for the fire. It's all yours. But David replied, No, I want to pay you what they're worth. I can't just take something from you and then offer the Lord a sacrifice that cost me nothing. So David paid Arana 600 gold coins for his threshing place. David built an altar and offered sacrifices to please the Lord and sacrifices to ask his blessing. David prayed and the Lord answered him by sending fire down on the altar. Then the Lord commanded the angel to put the sword away. When David saw that the Lord had answered his prayer, he offered more sacrifices there at the threshing place because he was afraid of the angel's sword and did not want to go all the way to Gibeon. That's where the sacred tent that Moses had made in the desert was kept, as well as the altar where sacrifices were offered to the Lord. 1 Chronicles chapter 22 David said, The temple of the Lord God must be built right here at this threshing place, and the altar for offering sacrifices will also be here. David ordered the foreigners living in Israel to come to Jerusalem. Then he assigned some to cut blocks of stone for building the temple. He got a large supply of iron to make into nails and hinges for the doors, and he provided so much bronze that it could not be weighed. He also had cedar logs brought in from the cities of Sidon and Tyre. He said, The temple for the Lord must be great, so that everyone in the world will know about it. But since my son Solomon is young and has no experience, I will make sure that everything is ready for the temple to be built. That's why David did all these things before he died. David sent for his son Solomon and told him to build a temple for the Lord God of Israel. He said, My son, I wanted to build a temple where the Lord my God would be worshipped. But some time ago he told me, David, you have killed too many people and have fought too many battles. That's why you are not the one to build my temple. But when your son becomes king, I will give him peace throughout his kingdom. His name will be Solomon, because during his rule, I will keep Israel safe and peaceful. Solomon will build my temple. He will be like a son to me, and I will be like a father to him. In fact, one of his descendants will always rule in Israel. Solomon, my son, 
I now pray that the Lord your God will be with you and keep his promise to help you build a temple for him. May he give you wisdom and knowledge so that you can rule Israel according to his law. If you obey the laws and teachings that the Lord gave Moses, you will be successful. Be strong and brave, and don't get discouraged or be afraid of anything. I have all the supplies you'll need to build the temple. You have 4,000 tons of gold and 40,000 tons of silver. There's also plenty of wood, stone, and more bronze and iron than I could weigh. Ask for anything else you need. I have also assigned men who will cut and lay the stone. And there are carpenters and people who are experts in working with gold, silver, bronze, and iron. You have plenty of workers to do the job. Now get started, and I pray that the Lord will be with you in your work. David then gave orders for the leaders of Israel to help Solomon. David said, The Lord our God has helped me defeat all the people who lived here before us, and he has given you peace from all your enemies. Now this land belongs to the Lord and his people. Obey the Lord your God with your heart and soul. Begin work on the temple to honor him, so that the sacred chest and the things used for worship can be kept there. 1 Chronicles chapter 23 David was old when he chose his son Solomon to be king of Israel. Sometime later, David called together all of Israel's leaders, priests, and Levites. He then counted the Levite men who were at least 30 years old, and the total was 38,000. He said, 24,000 of the Levites will be in charge of the temple. 6,000 will be temple officials and judges. 4,000 will be guards at the temple. And 4,000 will praise the Lord by playing the musical instruments I have given them. David then divided the Levites into three groups, according to the clans of Levi's sons, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Gershon had two sons, Laden and Shimei. Laden was the father of Jehiel, Zetham, and Joel. They were all family leaders among their father's descendants. Shimei was the father of Shelemoth, Haziel, and Haran. Later, Shimei had four more sons in the following order, Jehath, Zina, Jeush, and Bariah. But Jeush and Bariah didn't have many children, so their descendants were counted as one family. Kohath had four sons, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uzziel. Amram was the father of Aaron and Moses. Aaron and his descendants were chosen to be in charge of all the sacred things. They served the Lord by offering sacrifices to him and by blessing the people in his name. Moses, the man of God, was the father of Gershom and Eliezer, and their descendants were considered Levites. Gershom's oldest son was Shebuel. Rehabiah, who was Eliezer's only son, had many children. The second son born to Kohath was Izhar, and his oldest son was Shelemith. Hebron, the third son of Kohath, was the father of Jeriah, Amariah, Jehaziel, and Jechameam. Kohath's youngest son, Uzziel, was the father of Micah and Ishiah. Mirari had two sons, Malai and Mushai. Malai was the father of Eliezer and Kish. Eliezer had no sons, only daughters, and they married their uncle's sons. Mushai, the second son of Mirari, was the father of Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the clans and families of the tribe of Levi. Those who were 20 years and older were assigned to work at the Lord's temple. David said, The Lord God of Israel has given his people peace, and he will live in Jerusalem forever. And so the Levites won't need to move the sacred tent and the things used for worship from place to place. From now on, all Levites at least 20 years old will serve the Lord by helping Aaron's descendants do their work at the temple, by keeping the courtyards and rooms of the temple clean, and by making sure that everything used in worship stays pure. They will also be in charge of the sacred loaves of bread, the flour for the grain sacrifices, the thin wafers, any offerings to be baked, and the flour mixed with olive oil. These Levites will weigh and measure these offerings. 
Every morning and evening, the Levites are to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to Him. They must also give thanks and sing praises when sacrifices are offered on each Sabbath, as well as during new moon festivals and other religious feasts. There must always be enough Levites on duty at the temple to do everything that needs to be done. They were once in charge of taking care of the sacred tent. Now they are responsible for the temple and for helping Aaron's descendants. 1 Chronicles, Chapter 24 Aaron's descendants were then divided into work groups. Aaron had four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died long before their father, without having any sons. That's why Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests. David divided Aaron's descendants into groups according to their assigned work. Zadok, one of Eleazar's descendants, and Ahimelech, one of Ithamar's descendants, helped David. Eleazar's descendants were divided into 16 groups, and Ithamar's were divided into 8 groups, because Eleazar's family included more family leaders. However, both families included temple officials and priests, and so to make sure the work was divided fairly, David asked God what to do. As each group was assigned their duties, Shemaiah, the son of Nathanael the Levite, wrote down the name of the family leader in charge of that group. The witnesses were David and his officials, as well as Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, and the family leaders from the clans of the priests and the Levites. Each group of priests went by the name of its family leader, and they were assigned their duties in the following order. Jehoiarib, Jediah, Haram, Siorim, Melchijah, Mijamin, Hekaz, Abijah, Jeshua, Shechaniah, Eliashib, Jacob, Hapa, Jeshebiab, Bilga, Immer, Hezer, Hapazes, Pethahiah, Jehezekel, Jachin, Gamal, Deliah, Meaziah. These men were assigned their duties at the temple, just as the Lord God of Israel had commanded their ancestor Aaron. Here is a list of the other descendants of Levi. Amram was the ancestor of Shubiel and Jadea. Rehabiah was the ancestor of Ashiah, the oldest son in his family. Izhar was the father of Shalomoth and the grandfather of Jahath. Hebron had four sons in the following order. Jeriah, Amariah, Jehaziel, and Jechameam. Uzziel was the father of Micah and the grandfather of Shamer. Ishiah, Micah's brother, was the father of Zechariah. Mirari was the father of Malai, Mushai, and Jeaziah. Jeaziah had three sons, Shoham, Zachar, and Ibri. Malai was the father of Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar had no sons, but Kish was the father of Jeremiel. Mushai had three sons, Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the descendants of Levi according to their clans. Each one was assigned his duties in the same way that their relatives, the priests, had been assigned their duties. David, Zadok, Ahimelech, and the family leaders of the priests and Levites were the witnesses. 1 Chronicles chapter 25 David and the temple officials chose the descendants of Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun to be in charge of music. They were to praise the Lord by playing cymbals, harps, and other stringed instruments. Here is a list of the musicians and their duties. Asaph's four sons, Zachar, Joseph, Nethaniah, and Asarela, were under the direction of their father and played music whenever the king told them to. Jeduthun's six sons, Gedaliah, Zerai, Jeshiah, Shimei, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah were under the direction of their father and played harps and sang praises to the Lord. Heman had fourteen sons, Bakiah, Mataniah, Uzziel, Shebuel, Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedaltai, Romam Teizer, Josh Bacasha, Malathi, Hother, Mahaziath. 
Heman was one of the king's prophets, and God honored Heman by giving him 14 sons and three daughters. His sons were under his direction and played cymbals, harps, and other stringed instruments during times of worship at the temple. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman took their orders directly from the king. There were 288 of these men, and all of them were skilled musicians. David assigned them their duties by asking the Lord what he wanted. Everyone was responsible for something, whether young or old, teacher or student. The musicians were divided into 24 groups of 12, and each group went by the name of their family leader. They were assigned their duties in the following order. Joseph, Gedaliah, Zachar, Zerai, Nethaniah, Bacchiah, Azarela, Jeshiah, Madaniah, Shimei, Uziel, Hashabiah, Shebuel, Mattathiah, Jeremoth, Hananiah, Joshbakesha, Hanani, Malathi, Eliatha, Hother, Gedaltai, Mahaziath, and Romam Taizer. First Chronicles, Chapter 26. The temple guards were also divided into groups according to clans. Meshelamiah, son of Cori, was from the Korah clan and was a descendant of Asaph. He had seven sons who were born in the following order. Zechariah, Jediel, Zebediah, Jathniel, Elam, Jehohanan, and Eliowenai. Obed-Edom had been blessed with eight sons, Shemaiah, Jehozabad, Joah, Sekar, Nathanel, Amiel, Issachar, and Peolathai. Shemaiah was the father of Othni, Raphael, Obed, Elzebad, Elihu, and Semachiah. They were all respected leaders in their clan. There were 62 descendants of Obed-Edom who were strong enough to be guards at the temple. Eighteen descendants of Meshelamiah were chosen for this work. Hosa from the Merari clan was the father of Shimri, Hilkiah, Tebaliah, and Zechariah. Hosa had made Shimri the family leader, even though he was not the oldest son. Thirteen men from Hosa's family were chosen to be temple guards. The guards were divided into groups according to their family leaders, and they were assigned duties at the temple just like the other Levites. Each group, no matter how large or small, was assigned a gate to guard, and they let the Lord show them what he wanted done. Shelemiah was chosen to guard the east gate. Zechariah, his son, was a wise man and was chosen to guard the north gate. Obed-Edom was then chosen to guard the south gate, and his sons were chosen to guard the storerooms. Shopim and Hosa were chosen to guard the west gate and the Shalaketh gate on the upper road. The guards were assigned the following work schedule. Each day, six guards were on duty on the east side of the temple. Four were on duty on the north side, and four were on duty on the south side. Two guards were stationed at each of the two storerooms. Four were stationed along the road leading to the west courtyard, and two guards stayed in the court itself. These were the guard duties assigned to the men from the clans of Korah and Mirari. The Levites, who were relatives of the Korahites and the Mirarites, were in charge of guarding the temple treasury and the gifts that had been dedicated to God. Laden was from the Gershon clan and was the father of Jehiali. Many of his other descendants were family leaders in the clan. Jehiali was the father of Zetham and Joel, and they were responsible for guarding the treasury. Other guards at the treasury were from the Kohathite clans of Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. Shebuel was a descendant of Gershom, the son of Moses. He was the chief official in charge of the temple treasury. The descendants of Gershom's brother Eliezer included Rehabiah, Jeshiah, Joram, Zikri, and Shalomoth. Shalomoth and his relatives were in charge of all the gifts that were dedicated to the Lord. These included the gifts that King David had dedicated, as well as those dedicated by the family leaders, army officers, and army commanders. And whenever valuable things were captured in battle, these men brought some of them to the temple. 
Shalomoth and his relatives were responsible for any gifts that had been given to the temple, including those from Samuel the prophet, King Saul the son of Kish, Abner the son of Ner, and Joab the son of Zeruiah. Kenaniah from the Izhar clan and his sons were government officials and judges. They did not work at the temple. Hashabiah from the Hebron clan and 1,700 of his skilled relatives were the officials in charge of all religious and government business in the Israelite territories west of the Jordan River. Jerijah was the leader of the Hebron clan. David assigned him and 2,700 of his relatives, who were all respected family leaders, to be the officials in charge of all religious and government business in the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh. David found out about these men during the 40th year of his rule, when he had a list made of all the families in the Hebron clan. They were from the town of Jazer in the territory of Gilead. 1 Chronicles, Chapter 27 Each month, a group of 24,000 men served as soldiers in Israel's army. These men, which included the family leaders, army commanders, and officials of the king, were under the command of the following men, arranged by the month of their service. In the first month, Jashubim, the son of Zabdiel, a descendant of Pirus. In the second month, Dodai the Ahohite, whose assistant was Mikloth. In the third month, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, who was the leader of the thirty warriors, and whose son Amizabad was also an army commander. In the fourth month, Asahel, the brother of Joab, whose son Zebediah took over command after him. In the fifth month, Shamhath from the Isra clan. In the sixth month, Ira, the son of Ikesh from Tekoa. In the seventh month, Helaz from Pilon in the territory of Ephraim. In the eighth month, Sibekai from Husha of the Zira clan. In the ninth month, Abiezer from Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. In the tenth month, Meharai from Natopha of the Zira clan. In the eleventh month, Benaiah from Pirathon in the territory of Ephraim. In the twelfth month, Heldai from Natopha, who was a descendant of Othniel. Here is a list of the leaders of each tribe in Israel. Eliezer, son of Zikri, was over Reuben. Shephatiah, son of Maacah, was over Simeon. Hashabiah, son of Kemuel, was over the Levites, and Zadok the priest was over the descendants of Aaron. Elihu, the brother of David, was over Judah. Amri, son of Michael, was over Issachar. Ishamiah, son of Obadiah, was over Zebulun. Jeremoth, son of Azrael, was over Naphtali. Hoshea, son of Azaziah, was over Ephraim. Joel, son of Padiah, was over West Manasseh. Ido, son of Zechariah, was over East Manasseh. Jaaseel, son of Abner, was over Benjamin. Azarel, son of Jeroham, was over Dan. When David decided to count the people of Israel, he gave orders not to count anyone under twenty years of age, because the Lord had promised long ago that Israel would have as many people as there are stars in the sky. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, had begun to count the people, but he stopped when the Lord began punishing Israel. So the total number was never included in David's official records. Asmaveth, the son of Adiel, was in charge of the king's personal storage rooms. Jonathan, the son of Uzziah, was in charge of the king's other storerooms that were in the towns, the villages, and the defense towers in Israel. Ezri, the son of Kelab, was in charge of the workers who farmed the king's land. Shimei from Ramah was in charge of the vineyards, and Zabdi from Shephem was in charge of storing the wine. Baal Hanan from Geder was in charge of the olive and sycamore trees in the western foothills, and Joash was in charge of storing the olive oil. Shitrai from Sharon was responsible for the cattle that were kept in Sharon Plain, and Shaphat, son of Adlai, was responsible for those kept in the valleys. Obil the Ishmaelite was in charge of the camels. Jadea from Moronoth was in charge of the donkeys, and Jazz's the Hagrite was in charge of the sheep and goats. These were the men in charge of David's royal property. David's uncle Jonathan was a wise and intelligent advisor. He and Jehiel, the son of Hakmoni, taught David's sons. Ahithophel and Hushai the Archite were two of David's advisors. Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, was the king's advisor after Ahithophel, and later Abiathar was his advisor. Joab was commander of Israel's army. 
First Chronicles, chapter 28. David called a meeting in Jerusalem for all of Israel's leaders, including the tribal leaders, the government officials, the army commanders, the officials in charge of the royal property and livestock, the palace officials, and the brave warriors. After everyone was there, David stood up and said, Listen to me, my people. I wanted to build a place where the sacred chest would be kept, so we could go there and worship the Lord our God. I have prepared all the supplies for building a temple, but the Lord has refused to let me build it, because he said I have killed too many people in battle. The Lord God chose Judah to be the leading tribe in Israel. Then from Judah, he chose my father's family, and from that family, he chose me to be the king of Israel, and he promised that my descendants will also rule as kings. The Lord has blessed me with many sons, but he chose my son Solomon to be the next king of Israel. The Lord said to me, Your son Solomon will build my temple, and it will honor me. Solomon will be like a son to me, and I will be like a father to him. If he continues to obey my laws and commands, his kingdom will never end. My friends, you are the Lord's people. And now with God as your witness, I want you to promise that you will do your best to obey everything the Lord God has commanded us. Then this land will always belong to you and your descendants. Solomon, my son, Worship God and obey Him with all your heart and mind, just as I have done. He knows all your thoughts and your reasons for doing things. And so if you turn to Him, He will hear your prayers. But if you ignore Him, He will reject you forever. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple for worshiping Him. Be confident and do the work you have been assigned. After David finished speaking, he gave Solomon the plans for building the main rooms of the temple, including the porch, the storerooms, the rooms upstairs and downstairs, as well as the most holy place. He gave Solomon his plans for the courtyards and the open areas around the temple, and for the rooms to store the temple treasures and gifts that had been dedicated to God. David also gave Solomon his plans for dividing the priests and the Levites into groups, as well as for the work that needed to be done at the temple and for taking care of the objects used for worship. He told Solomon how much gold and silver was to be used in making the sacred objects, including the lampstands and lamps, the gold table which held the sacred loaves of bread, the tables made of silver, the meat forks, the bowls and cups, the gold incense altar, and the gold statue of a chariot for the winged creatures which were on the lid of the sacred chest. David then said to Solomon, The Lord showed me how his temple is to be built, but you must see that everything is done according to these plans. Be confident, and never be afraid of anything or get discouraged. The Lord my God will help you do everything needed to finish the temple so it can be used for worshiping him. The priests and Levites have been assigned their duties, and all the skilled workers are prepared to do their work. The people and their leaders will do anything you tell them. First Chronicles chapter 29 David told the crowd, God chose my son Solomon to build the temple, but Solomon is young and has no experience. This is not just any building. This is the temple for the Lord God. That's why I have done my best to get everything Solomon will need to build it. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, onyx, turquoise, colored gems, all kinds of precious stones, and marble. Besides doing all that, I have promised to give part of my own gold and silver as a way of showing my love for God's temple. Almost 120 tons of my finest gold and over 250 tons of my silver will be used to decorate its walls and to make the gold and silver objects. Now, who else will show their dedication to the Lord by giving gifts for building His temple? 
After David finished speaking, the family leaders, the tribal leaders, the army commanders, and the government officials voluntarily gave gifts for the temple. These gifts included almost 200 tons of gold, 380 tons of silver, almost 700 tons of bronze, and 3,750 tons of iron. Everyone who owned precious stones also donated them to the temple treasury, where Jehiel from the Levite clan of Gershon guarded them. David and the people were very happy that so much had been given to the Lord, and they all celebrated. Then, in front of everyone, David sang praises to the Lord. I praise you forever, Lord. You are the God our ancestor Jacob worshipped. Your power is great, and your glory is seen everywhere in heaven and on earth. You are king of the entire world, and you rule with strength and power. You make people rich and powerful and famous. We thank you, our God, and praise you. But why should we be happy that we have given you these gifts? They belong to you, and we have only given back what is already yours. We are only foreigners living here on earth for a while, just as our ancestors were. And we will soon be gone, like a shadow that suddenly disappears. Our Lord God, we have brought all these things for building a temple to honor you. They belong to you, and you gave them to us. But we are happy because everyone has voluntarily given you these things. You know what is in everyone's heart, and you are pleased when people are honest. Always make us eager to give and help us be faithful to you, just as our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob faithfully worshipped you. And give Solomon the desire to completely obey your laws and teachings, and the desire to build the temple for which I have provided these gifts. David then said to the people, Now it's your turn to praise the Lord, the God your ancestors worshipped. So everyone praised the Lord, and they bowed down to honor him and David, their king. The next day, the Israelites slaughtered a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, and they offered them as sacrifices to please the Lord, along with offerings of wine. The people were very happy, and they ate and drank there at the Lord's altar. That same day, Solomon was crowned king. The people celebrated and poured olive oil on Solomon's head to show that he would be their next king. They also poured oil on Zadok's head to show that he was their priest. So Solomon became king after David his father. Solomon was successful and everyone in Israel obeyed him. Every official and every soldier, as well as all of David's other sons, were loyal to him. The Lord made Solomon a great king, and the whole nation was amazed at how famous he was. In fact, no other king of Israel was as great as Solomon. David, the son of Jesse, was king of Israel for 40 years. He ruled from Hebron for seven years and from Jerusalem for 33 years. David was rich and respected and lived to be an old man. Then he died, and his son Solomon became king. Everything David did while he was king is included in the history written by the prophets Samuel, Nathan, and Gad. They wrote about his powerful rule and about the things that happened not only to him, but also to Israel and the other nations.